The average home uses over 10,000 kilowatt hours of electricity each year. And you may be surprised to know that the amount of electrical energy used in homes accounts for up to 30% of all the electricity consumed in California. Electricity is in short supply, and that's why the state of California has enacted building standards to substantially reduce the amount of electrical energy that homes use. Air conditioners are one of the biggest electrical energy users in the home. And there are a lot of technologies that you can use to reduce electrical energy use in homes and air conditioning costs, and one of those are radiant barriers, and they're located in the attic. Radiant barriers like this are one way to meet the California Energy Code. Joining me today is John Ish, who's an energy specialist for the California Energy Commission. John, how can I use radiant barriers to meet the Energy Code here in California? Well, Steve, uh, radiant barriers are now required when package D is used in climate zones 2, 4, and 8 through 15. And these radiant barriers must be installed in very specific ways. By looking at the residential manual, you'll be able to find exactly how these need to be installed. Now, what about the performance method? In the performance method, radiant barriers are not required. Uh, many buildings uh, uh, use the performance method for compliance, and that allows them to trade off the envelope measures with the heating and cooling and the water heating measures in the house. And so these are, it isn't required, but it's highly recommended that radiant barriers be used. Because it's a practical way to reduce energy loads in, in the attic, heat gain. That's correct, Steve. And the, the, one, the one thing about it is that uh, we're trying to reduce the peak loads in California. And radiant barriers are going to help meet that code because radiant energy from the sun has a huge impact on how hot attics get, which in turn drives up our air conditioning costs. Right, because when the ducts get hot uh, and you have hot air and if you happen to have leaky ducts, uh, that hot air gets inside the ducts, and even if it doesn't, it penetrates the insulation of the ducts. And the next thing you know, you're running your air conditioner all the time, and it isn't getting cooler, and you spend a lot of money. Now, how do I make sure that this stuff is installed right to meet the code? Because I don't want to, as a builder, I don't want to make sure this stuff isn't rejected. How do I make sure it's right? Well, as a builder, uh, you want to install, if you're installing a laminated product, then that must also be uh, installed on the gable end walls and you must uh, see to it that it's installed in all portions of the attic where you have uh, conditioned space below the attic. Now the shiny side always goes down and what you mean by a laminated product is, is a, a board material like this. Shiny side always goes down. Right. Got to have an air space between Right. The shiny it, side and the insulation. How there much? has to be about three and a half inches, a minimum of three and a half inches between the, uh, the, the radiant barrier and the insulation. What about attic ventilation? Very, very important, Steve, to have uh, good attic ventilation. As a matter of fact, we're required to have one square foot per every 150 square feet of attic area, uh, floor area of the attic, that is. And you're also required to uh, have 30% of the ventilation in the upper portion of the attic. Well, if you're thinking about using radiant bearers to meet the code, check out the code section 151F2 or the residential manual and click on the resources section of the online video training series.